Hello, this is Pastor Scott, and welcome to The Daily Message. Today is Saturday, March 28th. Please subscribe to these videos on YouTube. You can uh, also sign up for The Daily Message email. Get these in your email inbox. If you're watching these through Facebook and you want, you like it and you want to go ahead and share it with your friends, that would be great too. Uh, please get the word out. Reminder to please donate if you can to help support this ministry. We've added credit card uh, donation ability, so you can find links to that and all of this uh, at the end of this video and in the video description. All right, let's get some stats going here. Um, I haven't done stats since Thursday, so that's when we're gonna we're gonna start. So global cases are up 25% since Thursday. There were 485,000 on Thursday. Now there's 620. So that's that's a big jump. U.S. even bigger. Thursday we had 68,000. Today we have 105,000. So that's a 50% increase in two days. Right? Michigan did the same thing. Thursday we had 2,300 cases. Now we have 3,600, still fifth nationally. That's up 50%. And I just read that in particular, it's really bad in Detroit, that most of the cases in Michigan are actually in Detroit. Uh, there's something going on there. Maybe it's the space or uh, you know the proximity to people or folks just aren't paying attention. I read that the mayor of Detroit knows four people that died, which is crazy. Um, so it's real bad there. Not sure why. Uh, but just to put that in some perspective. If this rate continues, okay, if we keep having this many, in the U.S., we will have a million cases in two weeks. A million in two weeks. That's the track we're headed on. So we got to do better. That curve is not flattening. Um, today's sign that this is uh, not the apocalypse is that there's gas. Gas prices are actually low. Uh, my cousin texted me from Chicago the other day. Shout out to Kurt. He said the gas there was a buck fifty. Here it's a buck seventy. Um, you know, if you've watched The Walking Dead or Mad Max or any of that stuff, you know that it's it's the in the apocalypse. There's no gas, so we have gas. So that means it's not the apocalypse. But in the most disturbing sign that it is the apocalypse that I have seen yet, you all, some of you, are paying attention to my clothing. That is very disturbing and worrisome, and uh, I, I, I don't know how we're going to survive this. So you can decide for yourself if it's the apocalypse or not, but I know what I think if y'all are paying attention to my clothes. Good grief. So here's what's happening at church. Uh, the Holy Week and Easter update. So here's the deal. We can do some things, we can't do other things, but we are going to be live stream only for that week. The governor's order doesn't end until the day after Easter, so we're going to be live stream. We're going to have Palm Sunday, and we're going to leave palms outside of church, so you can just, whenever you're out running around, don't make a special trip. But when you have to go out, swing by church, grab some palms. They are not there yet, so don't go yet. We'll let you know when they're there. Then we will have Monday, Thursday live streamed we will have good friday live streamed we will not have an easter vigil live streamed because that just won't work um you can't do that you just can't live stream that there's too much movement too much motion but we will send you home some devotions that you can do at home to celebrate the easter vigil and then easter sunday will be live stream only so on that note i just want to remind you that whenever holy cross gets together for the first time and and we will we will get together again it will happen. That Sunday will be Easter. Whether it's May, September, I don't know, but it's going to be Easter. We're going to do it, and it's going to be fantastic. So we're going to have two Easter's this year. Um, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and again, a reminder about the uh, wor worship tomorrow, right? 10 o'clock. So check out that live stream. Just go to the Holy Cross uh, channel on YouTube, and the link will be right there. Try to be there about 10 minutes early just to make sure everything works. All right, so that's the news from church. Today's devotion, you're not going to need your Bible, because um, it's a real easy one. And, and this is a shout out to my high school friends. Um, some of you have been watching this, and maybe you knew Doug Lamora when we were in high school, but Doug went to our high school, and he was actually the son of my pastor at the time. And so Doug and I were in youth group together and all that fun stuff. And <laughs> I remember talking to Doug, because I met him, when I met him, he was in high school already. And we were talking about confirmation verses, you know, the Bible verse that you read. For those of you who don't know, in Lutheran churches and in other churches, when you 
finish eighth grade, you get confirmed, which is basically when you say that I'm taking ownership of my faith for myself. Like I'm gonna, it's not just my parents raising me, I believe this stuff. And typically in that ceremony, the person who's being confirmed will read a, a Bible verse that's particularly meaningful to them. And Doug said that uh, he wanted his Bible verse, he didn't, he did, his dad didn't approve it, but he wanted his Bible verse to be this one, which is our devotion for today. Uh, the Bible verse is John eleven thirty five, and the verse is Jesus wept. That's it. That's the whole verse. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. And Doug Lamora wanted that to be his confirmation Bible verse. His dad was like, now nah, I got to pick something, you know, with actual words. Uh, but this, this story, or this, this verse rather, takes place within the larger story of the raising of Lazarus, which is our uh, gospel reading for tomorrow. And the short version, because it's a long story and a fantastic story, it's basically all of John chapter 11. So if you have some free time today, just by chance, if you happen to have some free time, you can go look up in your Bible, John chapter 11, and just read the whole thing. It'll take you about six or seven minutes, maybe at the most. And the short version is Jesus had a friend named Lazarus, and Jesus wasn't around, and Lazarus died. And this verse takes place when Jesus shows up at Lazarus's tomb, because Lazarus has been dead so long that he's now been buried. And uh, Jesus Christ, right? Which might be counterintuitive if you know the rest of the story, because the rest of the story is that Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And so it might be tempting to think that because Jesus knows that he can raise Lazarus from the dead, that Jesus wouldn't be sad. Why would Jesus be sad? He's just going to be raised from the dead. It's fine, right? All's well that ends well. Well, see, that's the thing. All is not well that ends well. And a lot of times in life, things happen, and they might end well, but in the in between times, things are hard. And this coronavirus thing might end well. We might not get to a million cases. Uh, nobody you know might die. Nobody I know might die. I might not have to do a single coronavirus funeral. This could end well. Even if it does, it's proving to be hard. It is hard, and it is uh, not really getting easier, frankly, uh, for me, for any of us, and probably for you as well. And so Jesus gives us a model for, here, right? And he's, he, his model is that it's okay, right? It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be sad. Um, you know, uh, some of the religious leaders that I've listened to or heard or seen you know, we'll say that there's no place for grief. There's no place for sadness because Jesus is, makes everything unicorns and rainbows and everything's all happy and pretty and fun. And, you know, I believe that in the end times, right, Jesus returns and then kingdom of heaven comes to earth, that, that it will be that way. But not yet. Not yet. And so I want to encourage you to not, to not bury your sadness and your frustration over this. Um, acknowledge it. I invite you to allow that to be what it is. I invite you to let those feelings be what they are and to allow yourself the freedom to be frustrated and sad as Jesus was sad in this story and not just frustrated and sad, but whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that, that this is bringing out in you. It's all right. This is a hard time. And, um, and Jesus gives us a model that and says that it's okay to, to, to be upset. So I invite you to just allow yourself that freedom. Now, now you know, Let's not, you know, bark at our families and take it out on our, by kicking our dogs and things like that. Let's, uh, let's find healthy ways to, to manage it, but don't bury it. It's okay. We're all there. Our prayer focus today comes from Barb Lewis. Uh, thank you for this, Barb. Uh, Barb asks us to pray for those who are planning big life, life events. And, you know, she made a, she made a great point in this, in this email that uh, there are people who've got weddings planned, graduations all kinds of things that are big life events. And okay, in the in the scheme of, of, you know, death and grief and suffering, maybe they aren't as important as they as they might have been, but they're still important, you know? I mean, my wedding was a big deal. Graduations were a big deal. There's lots of other things too, you know? Um, there are lots of athletes who've worked their whole lives for, for sports seasons and then they don't, they don't get to participate in it. There's a lot of things that people are missing that are important, important parts of life. And so let's pray for all those who have things planned, big life events, 
that are threatened or are being missed. And let's pray for everyone now. I invite you to pray with me. Um, now, and I want just want to say this. If you're not a person who prays a lot, you know, if it's not part of your you know, normal practice, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, I typically close my eyes because it helps me to think and concentrate and focus on my, you know, lifting up my, my thoughts to God, my prayers to God. I also try and sit still. Um, I find that my back posture is important. I have a bad back. So if I sit funky, then I'm praying and my back starts to hurt. That, that doesn't do me any good. And, um, and just, you know, let the words that I say, you know, flow through you to God. And let's just close our eyes and, and pray now. God, be with everyone who is wrestling with the various forms of grief and sadness that we all have because of this coronavirus. We are grieving time spent with friends and activities. We are grieving loved ones who might be sick or who might be dying. We are grieving so many things in this time. And we pray that you would be with all of us and our, our nation and our world, everyone in it, as we struggle to find you in the midst of this, as we struggle to, to get through it um, and to know what to do in it. And we pray especially, Lord, for those who have big life things planned, those who are planning weddings or graduations or, or whatever it might be. And we ask you to send your peace to them in this time. Help them to know that you are with them, that your grace and your love are there. And um, just grant them whatever closure they can get uh, for the things that they're missing. Those things that are so important. Be with them and be with all of us in this time, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so that's the daily message for today. Tomorrow there will not be a daily message because we'll have live stream worship and we'll pick it back up on Monday. I'll remind you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. Be smart, stay safe, and I'll see you tomorrow and on Monday.